What's the story, everyone? Welcome back to GA Fan TV. My name is Aaron. I hope the form is well. I hope the form is good. What are the top 10 clubs in Gaelic football at the moment that are still in the running for the All Ireland Senior Club Football Championship? That is what we're going to be discussing today. That is what we are going to be breaking down. We're going to be looking at the top 10 clubs in Gaelic football at the moment that, of course, can still win. The All Ireland Senior Club Football Championship. A power rankings, I suppose to say, of the uh, top ten clubs that are left. And um, look, obviously, this is completely subjective. This is, you know, entirely my opinion. And um, you know, I'm sure people are going to disagree, and that's fair enough. But if you do disagree, let me know in the comments down below. And um, you know, why you feel maybe a certain club that's not in the list should be in there. Maybe certain teams should be higher. Um, but it is my opinion as a GEA fan and. Look, I'd be lying if I if I said I've watched every club inside and out. But you know what? This is a bit of crack. It's a bit of a laugh. And, and sometimes that's okay. Sometimes it's good to have a bit of fun, have a bit of a joke around. And um, yeah, see what you lads think in the comments down below. To be fair, to give credit to myself, I have watched a lot of club football this year and through the last couple of years. And in fairness, I do have a good recollection of a lot of the clubs on this list. I've seen a lot of them play already. I think I've seen all of them play, actually, in fairness. And yeah. Um, you know, obviously we're, we're basing this off who have the best players, who have the potential maybe to go on and do something great. And if each club were to play each other, who would be better? Who would win? Who is the better side as of right now? So that's what this is based on. But uh, without me rambling on any further, let's get cracking into it with the club football power rankings 10 to 1. Let's start off with number 10. So number 10 was a difficult one, to be honest. And uh, obviously when I was making this list, I was sort of taking certain clubs out and putting different clubs in. Port Arlington and both the Downs of Westmead, the Downs of Westmead, Port Arlington of Leash, both probably very unlucky to miss out, um, but I just didn't see how they could get on this list considering some of the other clubs that are on here. If we were doing a top 15 or top 20, you know, I think they would certainly be on there w without a shadow of a doubt. But in at number 10, I've gone for Kerrans or Ratleys of Kerry, the only Kerry side on this list. And to be fair, I have only put one team per county as such um obviously there's only one team left in the Kerry club championship but there are some championships that haven't finished yet Tyrone Cork Mayo for example um but I have just picked one because obviously you know it, it's not like both of them are going to progress on into the All-Ireland so that's the reason for that just clearing that up but yeah Kerrans O'Rahleys have put in at number 10 um Look, they're a club certainly with a lot of potential and they they very well could prove me wrong and be higher on this list. Maybe they could even be lower on this list. It's sort of hard to know. Um, I watched them play last year, obviously, in the Kerry Club Championship and, um, you know, they certainly do have a lot of very, very good players. Seen a couple of highlights of them this year as well. Seen them play a few times. You know, they've got a lot of very, very good players in fairness. Tommy Walsh, Jack Savage, Barry John Keane, David Moore in midfield. You know, that's a really, really good spine of your team. Like, I know Tommy Walsh and Barry John Keane obviously don't play with the, the senior inter-county team anymore, but they're two very famous names within Kerry football, and they're certainly two names that a lot of uh, fans would remember within Kerry. And, you know, Jack Savage was absolutely brilliant the last time out as well for Kerry. So, Ratleys, he scored six points. You know, and he's been on the fringes of the Kerry side and, and maybe is often a bit of an unsung hero within that Kerry team, given the fact that Kerry just seemed to have an array of forwards to choose from. Um... And obviously with Cairns or Ratleys, it was their first title since 2010 when they beat Temple No at the weekend, just gone. And their record, to be fair, this year is quite questionable. And that is why I have them so down on the list. Like, I don't think they've actually been brilliant so far this year. Just looking at their record in eight games played in both club and the county championship, they've three wins, one draw and four defeats. You know, which is kind of a mad record considering they're going to be actually going on and representing Kerry in the All Ireland Club Senior Football Championship or in the Munster Club Senior Football Championship, shall we say? Um, so I'd be curious to know what people think of that. Obviously, there's a lot of confusion around the Kerry Club and County Championship. Some sometimes we certainly are not going to get into it in this video. Um, but look, they have a lot of very good players. I think they can improve and get better couple more wins behind them and, and you know they could go on and, and get even better and in fairness to them to give them credit look they have won the Kerry Club Championship and I think you have to give them credit for that you know they beat the likes of Spa, Temple now obviously in there as well um, you know some 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 interesting wins some big wins in there are Spa and Temple now absolute household names and Kerry probably not in terms of teams so I'm not too sure if Cairns or Ratleys are that strong as opposed to maybe Austin Stacks last year 
or some other Kerry teams like Dr. Croaks down the years. But they have a lot of potential, a lot of very good players in there. A couple of young players maybe up and coming as well. So in fairness to Cairns or Rattleys, we should give them credit, but they are in at number 10. And number 9 is Nace of Kildare. Another team with a lot of potential and certainly another team that I think we'll be hearing a lot more of in the next coming years. I think they're a team that could very much go on to dominate Kildare in both football and hurling. And, um, you know, similar enough to Kilmacook Croaks, they're actually the only team this year that have won double-doubles, shall we say, in uh, back-to-back double titles in both football and hurling. So quite an extraordinary achievement there. And look, from watching Ace down the years and from watching them last year and at times this year as well, like they're a very, very good team. They have a lot of very good players. Dara Kirwan's a player that I've always been very impressed with from Kildare like I think he's a very very good forward very quick you know gets a lot of goals bit of a poser in around the square at times as well very tricky I mean he has struggled with injuries so we haven't seen much of him you know as much as probably what Kildare fans would have liked and for myself as a neutral at times I certainly would have liked to seen a lot more than him he was injured quite a lot last year Uh, I think he was injured for that Leinster club final as well um, but he's a very very good player he's back from injury now and uh, shooting the lights out in, in different games very impressive against Clane in that Kildare club senior football final Paddy McDermott Owen Doyle at centre back very very good Alex Byrne in midfield has been very impressive from an ace perspective as well and they're just a very well run club and look they will be playing Kilmoku Croaks on the opening day of the Leinster club senior football championship and that is going to be tough for them make no mistake about that going up against a team like Kilmacook Krogs who, you know, spoiler alert, they are on this list and, and maybe you can guess where I'll put them, but it's going to be very, very tough for them for, the, for them to beat that Kilmacook Krogs side. And look, we'll do a, a preview and prediction, obviously, when, when that game comes around. And I might even go to that game, to be fair, and maybe do a bit of a vlog, but they're a very, very good side. I think they're a team we're going to hear a lot more of in the coming seasons. I don't expect them to beat Krogs, but... I do have them on the on this list. I think they they certainly are in the top ten in terms of the remaining teams left that could win the All Ireland. So yeah, nice in at nine. In at eight, we have a Mayo representative, and it is Ballina Stevenites. Now I might be left to look with egg on my face if Westport go and beat them at the weekend, and and maybe we'll have to just delete this video. I don't really know, but I would have Ballina Stevenites as favourites. In fairness, like they've looked very very good in the Mayo club championship this year um you know they've put up some big big scores in a lot of their games they've beat the likes of Balladarine, the rain and champions knock more and obviously ballant hubber in that semi-final as well you know and looking at some of the players in their team they've david clark and goal who was obviously the man between the sticks for mayo for a number of years frank irwin who's been very very good underage player through the years for mayo in the last couple of seasons and certainly he's been in and around the senior team in the last couple of years but he hit one five the last day um, named at midfield as well. You've got you know a very good half forward line and Evan Regan in there, and obviously Padraig O'Hara playing at either centre back or wing back is certainly a player that a lot of Mayo fans and, and fans, GA fans in general, will be very very familiar with. But the most impressive thing for me for Ballinas Stevenites is the Roy for goal, fourteen goals in five games. That's very very impressive indeed, and I think they're a very very good side. I really really do. I think they're. In, in all honesty, I think they could be dark horses for something special this year. You know, I think they're really going under the radar because, you know, you look at, obviously, in Ross Common, he had Strokestown who came through there. Um, You know, are they going to be heavy hitters in Connacht? I'm not sure. You know, Mike Cullen haven't played in the Connacht Club Championship in a long time. I mean, Ballina haven't either, in fairness. But you're looking at it and thinking, like, I like the look of Ballina. They've looked very, very good this year from when I've seen them. And... um. You know, I think they're going to be a very, very tough team to beat. So, Ballina, Stephen Knight's an eight. We were talking of Galway there, and in at number seven is Moy Cullen. And um, again, you know, in similar fashion to uh, Ballina, Stephen Knight's, I think they are very, very underrated at the moment. You know, to, to turn over Mount Bellew, my lock, a team that a lot of people probably expected to go on and maybe reach the All Ireland final or possibly even win the competition. You know, big win for, for Mount Bellew, my lock over Corofin. And I think if Mount Bellew my lock had come through my Cullen, I think a lot of people, including myself, probably would have had them a lot higher on this list, in fairness. Um, in a similar fashion to uh, um, Ballon Ast Evenites, my Cullen still have to come through the Galway Senior Football Championship, which, to, to be fair, I think that game is going to be very, very close. And, um, you know, it's not a sure thing that my Cullen are going to co- come through that. Like, And it wouldn't actually surprise me if they got beaten, in fairness. But... 
Um, you know, I just think Moy Cullen will, will stand better in the in the Connacht Club Senior Football Championship as opposed to Salt Hill. You know, you look at the players in the Moy Cullen side and Sean and Patrick Kelly, Peter Cook in around the middle. You know, when I seen Peter Cook in the Galway side a few years ago, you know, he looks a very, very good midfielder, tall, physical. You know, some similarities in there with Brian Fenton in many ways. Not saying he's as good as, as, good as him, but there certainly is some similarities in there. You know, and what a, a, a find he would be if, if Galway could get him back into the senior team for next season. Although, you know, I think he has made fairly clear that he doesn't want to come back, but very good player nonetheless. And Michael Riley, Desi Keneally, two very familiar players in there as well. Desi Keneally been involved in the uh, in the county side in the last couple of seasons. You know, three goals past Mount Belly and Moylock as well. I mean, that is very, very impressive in fairness. Um so yeah, I think Mike Cullen are going to be a serious, serious threat for a lot of teams this year, and I've got them in seven. In six, I've got Errol Kieran of Tyrone, and I do think the Ulster Province is by far the strongest province of all the club teams. I think it's similar inter county level as well. I think you know competitiveness and in terms of so many good teams in that province, and it's no different um, at club level as well. And uh, look, Errol Kieran obviously have to beat Carrick Moore this weekend, and I fully expect them to do so. You know, it's been a long time since Carrick Moore won a, a county championship. And when you look at the talent of that Errigal Kieran side, the Canavans, obviously, Rory Canavan, Dara Canavan, you know, I watched Errigal Kieran in that game versus Dungannon. And I have to say, I was very, very impressed with them. I thought they were absolutely superb. You know, I think they've got a really, really good spine to their team. A lot of young players in there as well. Peter Hart's obviously an absolute veteran. You know, and they've been really really good this year like they've put teams down quite comfortably as well in the Tyrone Senior Football Championship so do you know like I think they're going to be a very very tough team to beat you know I wouldn't expect them to beat Watty Grimes Glen in the opening game in Ulster and um, don't want to jump too far with predictions or anything like that but it would be very very tough for them in fairness Um, but they're a very very good side and look the last team to win the Ulster Club Senior Football Championship from Tyrone was Errigal Kieran 20 years ago um, so could Errigal Kieran do something special probably unlikely but with the talent of players that they have with the potential that they could achieve I think I have them in that number 6 I don't think I know I have them in a number 6 in a 5 is Cross McGlen Rangers and look Cross McGlen another side with so much potential and could very well be higher on this list um, obviously we'll have to wait and see how they get on in the Ulster Club Senior Football Championship because there probably is some unknowns with Cross McGlen. Like it's been a while since they've played in Ulster. I think 2019 was the last time they were in the Ulster Club Senior Football Championship. Um, look, they strolled to an Armagh Senior Football Championship in more ways than one. They beat Mahri by 15 points and they beat Grain Moore by 12 points. Uh, Mahri in the semi-finals, Grain Moore in the final. Like just looking through some of the talent levels in this team. Rian O'Neill, as we know, is one of the best players in the country. Keane McConville is certainly an up and coming talent and you know I think he's the top scorer or was the top scorer in the Armagh Senior Football Championship Jamie Clark you know an absolute veteran of the game it's been a while since we've seen him live in the flesh and he's back now for Cross McGlen as well you've got Ronan Fitzpatrick who's looked very good and Aaron Kiernan incredibly still playing I mean he won a 17th county title at the weekend I mean that is just absolutely nuts you know I've seen a statistic where he's won 36% of Cross McGlen's senior football titles. I mean, that is an outrageous statistic. Um, look, you know, physicality might be a question mark, and obviously we don't know how well they can compete with some of the big teams, um, you know, in Ulster. I think I would expect them to get past Bally Bay. Beyond that, I'm not sure. It's going to be tough for them, but I've got them in a five. They're certainly a team that could win the All-Ireland. They've got a lot of potential, and if they can go on a run, you certainly wouldn't discount them. I mean, Cross McGlenn have proved through the years they have the talent, they have the players to do so. So I certainly won't be ruling them out, but I have them in, a, in at five. In at number four, we have the reigning All-Ireland Senior Football Champions, or the reigning All-Ireland Club Senior Football Champions, I should say, in Kilku of Down. I mean, there is a general consensus among a lot of people that Kilku are maybe slowing down. Maybe they don't have the same sort of hungerness as last year you know they haven't they've looked very vulnerable at times in down this year I mean they went to extra time six times I believe which is absolutely extraordinary um, but at the same time they came through all those games as we've said before and you know they're a team that has a lot of grit and determination and whether you like the way they play 
or whether you know you just like the way they play, they find ways to win games. And you think back to Finbar's last year, there was times they were in trouble on that semi-final. They found a way to win it against Kilmuckle Croaks. They looked down and out, and they got that last-minute goal. So, you know, they have a team that's obviously won in all Ireland, which a lot of the other teams on this list haven't, and certainly all of their players haven't recently anyways. Um, so, Kilku, like, you definitely cannot write them out. And when you have players like Ryan Johnson... Paul Devlin, obviously in the forwards. Michal Rooney has been very impressive at wing back. I was very impressed with him last year. Sheelan Johnston, very, very impressive. Up and coming player. Could possibly be in with Down this year, although we did think that last year and he wasn't. You've got the Brannigans, obviously, as well. Eugene and Aidan Brannigan and a few more in there. There's so many Brannigans. Um, so I like the look of Kilku, and I think you definitely cannot rule them out, but I think there probably are teams at this moment in time that I think are better than them. And I think you would look at it and say that you wouldn't be surprised if Kilku were caught. But in terms of a power rankings, I have them in a four, a lot of potential to, to improve up on this list. And, you know, whoever beats them, like, is probably going to be favourites for the All-Ireland as well. In at number three, and this is probably a surprising pick, and maybe some people might disagree with this in the comments down below, but I've gone for St. Finbars of Cork. And, look, I really like the look of, of St. Finbars. Um... You know, I did tip Nemo Rangers to beat them in the in the Cork Premier Senior Football Championship, as they call it, um, back before a, a ball was kicked. You know, obviously the final is this weekend, and, and I could very much be wrong. And if Nemo Rangers beat Finbars, I would certainly have them on this list. I don't know if I'd have them as high as number three. Um, but I just really like the look of Finbars. And I think if they can get over Nemo, like they have a lot of potential to, to go on and do something special, in my opinion. Um I think they're hugely underrated. Like for me, Stephen Sherlock has proven, you know, on form, on the basis of 2022, like he is one of the best forwards in the country. Like he's done it at club level. He's done it at inter-county level. He's been brilliant for Cork. He's been consistent. Um, and he's a very, very good player. And I think if you keep him fit, you keep him without an injury, I think Finn Maris could have a serious, serious chance of doing something special. Ian McGuire and Brian Hayes in midfield, up there as one of the best midfield pairings at club level, in my opinion. Colin Myers Murray has been very consistent in there as well. Defensively, maybe could be a bit of a weakness, you know, as opposed to some of the Ulster teams who set up very well defensively and sort of limit the space and are very restricted in how they play at times, but it can be very effective as we've seen with Kilku. So could that be Ori of Finbar's maybe a bit of an ambush being hit on the counter-attack? Because from what I've seen of them, they are very high scoring, but they do concede quite a bit as well. Um, but I think with the players and with the potential that they have, if they can shore up a bit, bit, a bit more defensively, I think they've got a serious chance. Like I would expect them to come through, all, to come through Munster. Um... And after that, like you would give them a serious, serious chance. So yeah, same film bars in at number three. And then we move into the top two. And in at number two, it is Waddy Graham's Glen and back to back Derry champions. I watched them at the weekend against Slot Neil. Was very, very impressed with them. I do think Slot Neil massively underperformed in fairness. Um, but I think Waddy Graham's Glen have got a very, very good side. I mean, you know, we were talking about Finbars having one of the best midfield pairings in the country and it would be the best midfield pairing in the country at club level if there was no such thing as Waddy Graham's Glen because they have Connor Glass and Emma Bradley in midfield. You have Michael Warnock in at number six now as well. He was very impressive at the weekend. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. Conleth McGuckian, Danny Tallon, Connor Doherty all very good as well. Like, do they have super forwards maybe as opposed to surprise, surprise number one on this list? Probably not, in all honesty, and maybe that could be something that lets them down further on down the line. But they're a serious, serious team, and you know they were narrowly beaten by Kilku last year. I think that game went to extra time as well. You know they're going to take some stopping this year. Make no mistake about it. Maliki O'Rourke, as we know, you know an absolute legend of the game for what he done with Monaghan as manager, and he's achieving brilliant things with Watty Graham's Glen at the moment as well. So. You know, Watty Graham's Glen, serious, serious team, in at number two. And now, let's get on to our number one. And I don't think our number one can be too many surprises. It's Kilmuckle Croaks. And um, look, they've been my pick for the All-Ireland since the beginning. That hasn't changed at the moment in time. I know they haven't looked brilliant at times in Dublin. Like, there have been a few moments where they've looked vulnerable against the likes of Kula. Um, and obviously in that final versus Nafina. And... 
you could say obviously if they didn't have Shane Walsh they probably wouldn't have won the Dublin Championship but guess what they do have Shane Walsh and unless he gets injured they probably will win the All-Ireland and certainly on form on the basis of what we've seen last year on the basis of the players and talent that they have you would have to say right now that they are the best club team in the country. Shane Walsh we know what he is we know the talent that he is I don't really need to mention him because I think everyone knows how good he is Tom Fox, Shane Cunningham, Darren Mullen, also very, very good forwards. Craig Diaz in midfield, I've been very, very impressed with over the last couple of years, and I thought he was very good against Nafina in that final. And then you have Rory O'Carroll in at number six. You know, he's probably in the best form that we've seen him in, to be honest, this year. He's been absolutely excellent defensively and also as well going forward. You know, he got a couple of goals in that game versus Temple Oak. You've got Dan O'Brien and Aiden Jones, who've also been very, very solid at the back as well. Um, you know, and Wick Croaks obviously losing that final to Kill Q last year in heartbreaking fashion. Can that spur them on to go one step further? I would give them a serious chance. And as I said, they certainly are my pick for the All Ireland at this moment in time. Why I have them at number one? I could change my mind. Who knows? And I will do a predictions video at uh, at some point in the next week, looking at um, the All Ireland Club Senior Football Championship in further detail. But Croaks, they're just an absolute monster team, and we haven't even mentioned Paul Mannion. And obviously, he's injured, and it's very unlikely that he'll play for Chemical Croaks in the championship again. Um, maybe an All Ireland final at a stretch, but that's probably doubtful as well. If I'm being perfectly honest. Um, you know, so you factor in him as well. Like it just it croaks solidified at number one, and until they're beaten, until they're knocked off that perch, you would have to put them at number one right now. And I do fully expect them to go on and win the All Ireland because they have a serious, serious team from fifteen back down to one. In terms of some honourable mentions, maybe that are not on this list. Obviously, some of the teams that are playing in club finals, like Westport, for example who uh, I obviously went with Ballina in this list, but I didn't want to put two teams from Mayo on there just because obviously one of them won't be there um, at the end of this weekend. So I'm kind of gambling a little bit there, shall we say. And, and to be fair, Westport, like Lee Keegan's obviously in that team. Mark Moore, we've seen uh, down the years as well, is, is a very, very tidy footballer. So, you know, Westport, look, if, if they come through Ballina, they'll certainly be on the top 10. And I'd probably put them in at number eight as well, in fairness. Um, outside of that, Port Arlington, we mentioned the Downs, obviously. Big possibility of them maybe making a Leinster final. Um, you know, could Road maybe do something in Offaly? You're looking over in Connacht, obviously, Strokestown came through Boyle. They obviously won the, the Ross Common Senior Football Championship. I'm just not sure the talent levels are quite there, in all honesty, from a, from a Strokestown point of view. And to be honest, I haven't seen too much of them, so maybe I'm just a little bit sort of short of knowledge. In that, uh, in that subject. Um, Turles Strand, very good side as well, in fairness, and Sligo, like we've seen the consistency of them down the years, winning, you know, what, seven county titles in a row uh, in Sligo as well. So, look, there's a lot of good sides. Bally Bay maybe have an argument in, in Monaghan. Um, is there anyone else there that I've, I've left out off the top of my head? I don't think there is, to be honest. Uh, Palatine actually look very good um, against St. Patrick's, but I just don't think they have enough... I don't think they're better than the other teams on this list, shall we say. Um, but yeah, let me know down in the comments below. What did you think of my power rankings from 10 to 1? Uh, what changes would you make? And, um, you know, who will be number 1 come the end of the year? You know, who will go on and win the All-Ireland? That is certainly going to be the big, big question. And obviously provincial titles and all the rest. I will do a, a club championships predictions and, and preview out next week for both football and hurling. I'm not going to do a power rankings for Hurling because, to be honest, the knowledge just isn't quite there and I would be bluffing. I mean, to be fair, I'm always bluffing, but uh, I would probably be bluffing even more um, if I'm being honest. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. The washing machine is going absolutely 90, so I better get back to that. Smash the like button, subscribe. I'll see you all later.